today I'm looking at the Team Zwat Spider power meter. That's kind of weird to pronounce. Team Zwat or Zwat was born through a Kickstarter campaign and Indiegogo campaign back in August 2016, about two and a half years ago. There was a lot of hype around the product, not for anything in particular about the hardware or any unique offerings, more so around the subscription-based model for their power meter. They offered an initial lower upfront cost for their power meters with an ongoing maintenance fee or subscription fee per month, plus a requirement to upload data every month so they could learn more about their users and their hardware and how it was operating. As of a few weeks ago, that model has been disbanded. It's now what you see is what you get for the pricing scheme. I'll leave that in Euro as well because Teams what only have the ability to sell to EU countries at this point in time with these products. Stay tuned for future products, which may be different, but I'll leave that. You'll need to do the conversions yourself if you're looking at these power meters. Personally, I think that's a good move by Teams Watt. The complexity and overheads of monthly payments and seeing that come off your credit card every single month, plus having to pull out the app to upload data, it's all a bit too hard. Bit of a barrier to entry for these products. What I've been riding on the bike recently is this crank set here, which is the 172.5 FSA Gossamer crank set. It's a BB386 Evo, compatible with BB86-30, PF30, BSA30, etc., etc. Bit of a struggle to get the right bottom bracket installed, but the team did supply the correct bottom bracket bearings for me to get that installed on the TCR. Scrolling down straight to the tech specs of the unit, it's all summarized right here. So power, cadence, pedal smoothness, left, right balance, rechargeable battery with a little magnetic connector, which is pretty cool. Uh, 240 hours of usage time, which is quite large considering other power meters are around 60 to 80 hours with the pedal-based power meters. Connectivity, AMP Plus and Bluetooth simultaneously. So that's a handy thing if you're using Zwift for iOS or Apple TV, you'll have direct connectivity there. Waterproof, uh, temperature range, negative 10 Celsius to plus 50 Celsius. So most of us are covered there. Secure wireless firmware updates via the app, via your mobile phone. Accuracy plus or minus 2% and designed and assembled in Denmark. Scrolling down to the weight of the unit, it is listed as 755 grams. However, that does exclude chain rings and bolts. So putting the whole unit on the scales here, you see it tips the scales in at 975 grams. So look, I won't beat around the bush with this. This is a heavy crank set. If you're into very light bike components, you will not be looking at this crank set at all. The Altegra 6800 tips the scales in at 703 grams. Stages, Durace left, right, tips the scales at 674 grams. And the Pioneer with the same chain rings, the 5236 tips the scales in at 696 grams. So you're looking at a 250 gram penalty going with this chain set. So there is no getting around. Those FSA Gossamer crank sets are pretty heavy, but there is an option for the K-Force carbon crank set, which is listed at 556 grams from Z-Watt. So with rings and everything, that'll bring it up to around the same weight as the Altegra and Durace left-right offerings by other companies. That will set you back 749 euro or an extra 300 euro above the Zwat Spider Mega Exo FSA thing that I'm running. Given the complexities of installing a crank set with different bottom bracket types and compatibility, the Team's Watt FAC is pretty handy with a ton of info there. So it lists different bottom brackets and bike compatibility information. Uh, it also answers, is there support for oval chain rings? No, there's not at this point in time. Also details about Bluetooth and AMP Plus and also how to check battery levels on there. So the Team Zwat FAC, I will link below to that if you want further info. Installing the unit was straightforward. Once I had the chain rings installed, the correct bottom bracket put on the TCR, the correct spaces, I'd updated the firmware. Yeah, okay, it's not really that straightforward. It's not as easy as putting a pair of pedals on a bike and away you go. But once I had everything sorted, it was good to go. Speaking of firmware updates, let's have a quick look at the app itself, the firmware update process, and a few of the options. So once logged into the app here, we can see the list of firmware updates. 144 is the latest one. So I will speed this process up. This did take three minutes and 10 seconds. On screen here, it should take at least eight seconds. And there we go, we are done. Alrighty, back to the main screens here. And, oh, okay. Uh, they might need to update their app. It tells me here that I need to pay to get power to show on screen. That's not actually a requirement anymore. I'll just dismiss that and hope for the best. Jumping over to the options. And under the options screens here, there's quite a few things. Logging enabled, uh, mobile network for data, firmware updates. There's also power averaging. There's also power measurement trimming. I'm not quite sure what that setting does. I'm sure it's over there in the FAQ or FAQ on their website. So this app does look like it's due for a refresh any day soon. Before I jump over to the DC Ramaker analysis tool and start obsessing over the data that I've collected both indoors and out, I will mention something I usually skip over and that is the product worked as a crank set. It held the pedals on, no problems. 
the crank spun, no problems at all. And if I close my eyes, I couldn't tell I was on something different. So I do have to mention that, that it is a crank set first, a power meter second, but now let's dig into that data. Okay, here we are at my favorite website on the internet, DC Rainmakers Analysis Tool, where we can compare multiple power meters with an overlay and see how they stack up compared against each other. First of all, a disclaimer, I'm gonna go down a rabbit hole with this one, so buckle in, enjoy the ride. First up, I'll cover a few basics, and that will be, the data was pretty good. Look, one for one for the entire rides that I did from a few minutes to a few hours, the data was very comparable with multiple power meters that I used. I did find a few quirks, and that's what I'm gonna drill down to today in. Um, my cheat sheet reads as follows, the, and I'll use this because I've got multiple data sets to refer to here and I will refer back to my cheat sheet to tick the box to make sure I'm seeing what I'm seeing. So my cheat sheet that I have here, so overall, pretty good. Leave it there if that's all you wanna know. <laughs> Buckle up. Uh, the right reads high indoors above 400 watts sometimes. The left reads high indoors during steady state. The right reads low out of the saddle outside when you're throwing the bike side to side, and in that instance, the cadence goes wonky. Yeah, I've got it written down, it's my cheat sheet. Let's dive into the data. So first of all, Llama lab test number one. This was six months ago, so I've had this unit for a while. This was with the original firmware that it did come with. So up against the uh, PowerTap P1, the Neo, and the ZWatt Spider. Diving into the steady state stuff, well, first of all, 197, 199, 203 averages there. Happy days, as I said, it was pretty good. Um, diving into the steady state and into the sprints. Happy days, it's all good. Not much to report there. Um, if I did want to nitpick this a little bit, I'll scroll down to the left, right power. Now this is where I'm starting to dig a little deeper in every new power meter that I do get. So I'm starting to dig a little harder and harder at these things to keep them a little bit more honest. We are moving months and years down the track of this technology. So I think it's okay to start uh, putting them to the sword a little bit harder. What we can see here is there is a standout for the left, right power meter. And there is a red line there that you can see stands out above the rest, not too much, but it does stand out. It reads differently. So I had the left, right independence on for the power tap. So it does give me different two different channels for each. Same with the Zwat and the Neo just reads one. But onto that red line, and that is the left Zwat reading high indoors in steady state. Checking my cheat sheet, Pating. yes. So we can see there, it just the left reads a little bit high with the steady state there. Jumping back up to the overall power into the sprints, that's all looking pretty cool there. There's no major gaps or you know, 150 to 200 watt differences in the sprints there between those three power meters on the bike, all good. Into the overs and unders, not too bad, not too bad at all. Um, but if we do wanna dive down and like really nitpick what's going on here, you can see the one line there is a little higher than the rest and that happens to be the, 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 the right Z-Watt spindle. So the right reads high indoors above 400. That's the 450 watts, cheat sheet ticked. So a few small quirks there, but I am totally nitpicking this because we scroll down to the mean max power for the entire ride and it's there's three power meters there all looking pretty damn good. So 274, 277, 273 for the five minute power, going up to the 20 minute power, all within a few watts of each other. That's looking pretty good. Into the maximals, 1161, 1158, 1149. Happy days, we could leave it there, but I didn't. Llama Lab test number two, six months later with a new firmware, a little bit different result. So diving into that here, now I've got the Tax Neo 2, PowerTap P1s again, and the Zwat Spider. You can see there's a bit of separation, or if I change the uh, scale a little bit, it pops out a little more. There, you can see the purple line there, reading a little higher indoors on the Z-Watt by about 10 to 15 watts during steady state. Jumping down to the left, right power, ignoring the blue line there because that's the Neo 2, not splitting out left and right correctly. You can see the purple line there. Purple line happens to be the left Z-Watt, reading a little high in steady state. Left reads high during steady state. Cheat sheet for the win. So something's going on there. Now this time around, six months down the track, same Llama lab test, same over and unders, and you can see clearly there, there's a higher reading on the Z-Watt, the purple line at the top. Hmm. Jumping down to the split out of left and right power on that, ignore the blue, that's the Neo, doubling up on one side and forgetting the other. Uh, we'll pick out this one here, and we can see the left reads high indoors. So they may have fixed that above 400, but I've left reads high indoors in steady state. So might have been a little bit more responsive, but yeah, I've got left reading high. You can see there, there's a bit of a difference that wasn't there in my initial Llama lab tests. 
Hmm, don't know. So Llama lab test number two, six months down the track was a little bit different. Whether that was a zero offset problem, I did a zero offset of all power meters at the 10 minute mark after a warm up. Don't know, don't know what's happening there. But it was consistent with my cheat sheet, just a little more uh, magnified this time around. Scrolling down to the mean max power and there was separation there with those three power meters. So 271, 272, 283. So the Z watt is reading a little higher now indoors. Same with the 10 minute mark through to the 20 minute mark. Hmm. So two Llama lab tests with two different sets of results. Overall, still pretty good. The second one read a little high. However, data is data, that's what I got. Onto the outdoor rides. Now I have a few of these to test and we have a rabbit hole to dive right down. We can select nearly anywhere, just cruising along. Data looks good, 227, 226 for a, what's that, a 10 minute period there with a bit of a sprint. No major differences. You will get different readings where you, as you stop pedaling, start again, and how it averages things out, but that's pretty good within one watt. The quirk that I did see was jamming it up a hill, out of the saddle, reefing on the bars side to side. So really putting the bike like this, something you can't replicate indoors. Even with a rocker plate and with the, um, the rock and roll train, it doesn't quite do it justice. Outdoors, you can really get different angles on the crank sets. That seemed to be a problem for this power meter. So you can see right here, there's a big separation right here, 320, oh, 924 actually, I was right up there, 924 versus 980 on the pedals. That is a bit of a difference. And when scrolling down, looking at the left right of that, we can see there's one that's dropping pretty hard. Let's go to my cheat sheet. The right reads low, out of the saddle, with the bike throw sprint, and the cadence goes wonky. That's my little cheat sheet note for that. What we can see there is the right reading low on the Z watt up against the PowerTap P1. So the P1s are suspiciously identical, both sides, but we'll go to down here. So 483, 479, 478, 460. So we're dropping 18 watts on one pedal. Again, it's only small. I'm down the rabbit hole here, but there is a difference that I can't explain. Scrolling down to the cadence of that, and here is where it starts. This is the entrance to the rabbit hole. You can see the cadence there as it goes up and up and up, it gets, this hill is nice and smooth that I was riding up. So it's just one of those gradual hills, you know, where your legs start burning and you start slowing down a little bit. You, you're a, you know what I'm talking about. That's exactly what happened on this hill. But something weird happened with the Zwat spindle. You can see there the cadence actually rose as the cadence on the power taps came down. Now the purple line there is the cadence that was happening. I was going slower. I was hurting. The legs were burning until I came to a zero cadence stop, well, and just coasted. For whatever reason, the Z Watt spindle thought I uh, accelerated in my cadence and I didn't, and that will result in a wonky power reading. Hmm, other than that, happy days. On to my next ride outdoors, super hot day, about 40 degrees, really putting this to the sword, looking pretty good, up against the P1s again. So 177 versus 178. Let's just dive in and have a look at this, bit of a steady state and a sprint there. So 232, 228, sprint looks good. Steady state looks good. So again, riding along is okay until I hit a slight rise and purposefully put this to the sword by reefing on the bars and really ripping the bike side to side because I knew this is where it was failing on me before. And you can see there the separation. Scrolling down to the left right power and there's a massive separation there. The Back to the cheat sheet. Right side reads low, out of the saddle with the bike throw sprint and the cadence goes wonky. Right side, so 234, 225, 234. Again, because there's, the reason why I'm doing it, there's four power meters on the bike. We have right, right, left, and left. So two power meters, double side. One goes a bit wonky. Jumping to the cadence of that particular section and referring to my cheat sheet where it says the cadence goes wonky when you're out of the saddle sprinting. Um, yeah, that's happening here as well. So the power tap's nice and smooth. Really sort of, oh, it's just slowly creeping up. But the Z-Watt goes from 75 RPM up to 92 RPM within one second. That doesn't actually occur, but according to it, it does. The internal calculation is gonna be a bit screwy and the power is gonna be a bit off. And we can see there's a big separation of 70 watts right there when that does take place. So something's up with the cadence or the accelerometer, which is the cadence sensor, when out of the saddle doing this kind of hoiking on the bars. So as I'm not far enough down the rabbit hole, let's keep digging five more outdoor tests, of which two I'll ignore for this presentation because it was just testing the quark and my sanity up against some other power meter pedals. So it was the P1s, the Asiomas, and the Vector 3s. I did three runs of one kilometer in length. The first minute was just steady state riding in a big gear. 
the next minute or so was out of the saddle, about 500 watts reefing on the bike and the bars. And the next minute was just rolling home, just convenient. There was uh, a triangle that I was going around. And it pretty much confirmed what I was seeing out on the road and I could replicate this. So this is good data for Team Zwat to have a look into. Um, and again, I'm way down the rabbit hole. Overall numbers were good. You can see here the data actually looks pretty good overall. So 194 and 194. So overall was fine. But in this particular instance, I can make it read a little lower. So you can see here, just rolling along, just rolling along, out of the saddle, reefing on the bars, and psh, they start to separate. After that reefing on the bars section, I then rolled home nice and smoothly with a nice smooth cadence with the bike nice and straight because I wasn't out of the saddle and the numbers were good. And scrolling down to the left right power and yeah, right side reads low out of the saddle with the bike throw sprint, exactly what we're seeing. Scrolling down to the cadence and it really does uh, appear just here of what's happening. So nice and smooth the first minute out of the saddle, cadence goes wonky on the Z-Watt. Uh, the readings go wonky, obviously, and then rolling home, it's just fine. Same test, again, with the Vector 3s. The Vector 3s, uh, hmm, a little closer, still no better. There was uh, a little bit of difference in the power readings you can see there. The Vector 3s are very jumpy. I didn't have any smoothing installed for those. Um, but if we do dive into the left-right power, uh, there was an instance there where the right Z-Watt is a little lower. And the cadence, you can see there, there's the cadence graph of nice and smooth, nice and smooth. Gets a bit jagged and then nice and smooth at the end. Third test, some of my favorite pedals, the Ferrero Asioma Duos. Same thing, there was a gear change halfway through my out of the saddle section. So again, it looks pretty similar, uh, but if we dive down to the left right power there and cheat sheet, right reads low, out of the saddle, cadence goes wonky. Right's reading a little low, out of the saddle, cadence goes wonky. Hmm. Okay, extracting ourselves from that rabbit hole. Now, I don't set out to go down rabbit holes when I get a product to have a look into and look into the data. I'd love it if I could just put a power meter on the bike, ride it and go, eh, good enough for me. But when I do encounter an issue, I dig and dig and dig and try and find out what's going on, see if I can replicate that and try and remove myself from the picture and anything that might be causing that. For example, the P1s, were they causing that issue? Didn't appear to be because we saw the same separation in those reefing on the bars sprints with the Vector 3s a little bit, and also the Asiomas, which have been pretty handy. That cadence going wonky, just at that particular time where the uh, power separates, that's gotta be it. So over to the team now at ZWatt to have a look at that and see what's going on. Might be a tweak in the firmware required. Hopefully it'll lead to a better product. So that small instance aside, which I did put the magnifying glass on, everything else is pretty good. Those separations in erg mode with the second Llama lab tests, don't know, could be a firmware thing, could be a zero offset thing. I tried to eliminate all those variables, but it was still a little bit different. Early on, the very first Llama lab test was fine. So, hmm, it's the great unknown. Anyhow, keep an eye on this. I'll put pin posts below if Team Zwatt have any comments on this and I'll bring you updates as they come. Okay, wrapping it up there for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed that rabbit hole and the process that I go through to try and eliminate all the variables to get things totally lined up. In this case, they weren't quite lined up just yet. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.